Hey guys, today we are going to look at the Masterpiece series, the Amarquette Invercations, to see what the price is. For it looks like the top eight cards, and it's quite interesting to notice what the cards actually are and what they used to be. Force of Will is now only $184, which is a heavy decline of what it used to be. Thought Seized Blood Moon. They just came out. So there are healthy prices. Now will that price stick? Who knows? I'm guessing that the answer would be no. Just like Force of Will, eventually enough of them will be opened and they will drop. Blood Moon in particular, I can see it as sub 100. Thought Seas is more of an interesting one because the artwork is very good in that card. So let's talk mainly about Force of Will to begin with. This card was a $300 plus card until cratering to pretty much oblivion. And now it is around sub 200. It is important to know that it is the most expensive invocation by far in the Amarquette set. Now, Hour of Devastation, the value is spread more evenly, but they don't have a $100 or $200 card as its main chase. So in Amaket, it's either a Feast or Famine, but you, you have to win the lottery of getting an Invocation. Then you need to win the second lottery of being that Invocation being Force of Will. Otherwise, it's just kind of met. Now, I do want to talk about the newer invocations and the spread of value in them. Thought Seas in particular has obviously, we don't truly know what it is, but it looks good to me. Um, the artwork looks fantastic. I think we are getting more used to this type of format where the borders are just like, okay, whatever, the borders are the borders. Initially, it is quite surprising when you look at it, but now the fact we have a second round of these, it's less appalling, I guess, would be the way I put it. Now, will this price hold $150, $160? I don't think so. Uh, I think it will be a steep decline on this one, uh, mainly because Thoughtseize is a highly played card, and... There's already a beautiful version of it in the original Lorwyn. So is this artwork better than that version, which is, I think, a $300, $400 foil? Definitely not. Next, Blood Moon. So this is an interesting one, and it's already stopped, dropped from 200 to 122 I expect a second drop. Now, as with most of these masterpieces, is the artwork better is the question that you have to ask. I don't know, like I like all the Blood Moons. I don't feel like this one is any more special. It's kind of creepier and more red, like as funny as that sounds, because the original Blood Moon is quite red as well. Uh, but it is something where I could see it being in high demand, mainly because it is a four of. And typically when you need four of a card, it's going to be more valuable than if it was just a single standalone EDH card because it's easier to find a buyer. Or as a buyer, it is easier to buy a playset of them when you need it. So instead of having two Blood Moons from Chronicles, you can just have four from this set. Now, the next one is another card. As I've said, the value, you don't have Force of Will, which previously was at 200 but you do have a better spread of the value for the Hour of Devastation. Uh, one of the cards that are is very interesting, sub 100, is great in Vintage, great in EDH, one of the more beautiful cards. I do feel like the artwork was very good. It was very well done. I just don't think the frame depicts it well. Like, in my opinion, why would you go with less artwork? I believe this is less artwork because it looks like the enchantment takes a lot of space what it, uh, and not more. Because every other card game, the really special cards are full art lad, or full art work. 
uh, from Car 5 Vanguard to Pokemon to everything else. Uh, next, Damnation. Uh, there's not much data on these cards, and that's why it's interesting to make this video now. Because who truly knew, knows what's actually going to happen with these card values? My gut feeling is most of these will drop a ton, but some of them may go up. Um, it is one of those things that I think it's going to be fully dependent on the artwork. Because these cards are not difficult to obtain. Damnation was just recently reprinted as a rare. So it's not difficult to obtain a Damnation. But the question is, which version is the best? Uh, for Doxies, and this is why I'm pointing at Doxies in particular, we all know that the original version is considered by many to be far superior than the Invocation version. Yet it's still holding a $150, $160 price point. All right, now this card is another one. So do you see a pattern happening where it is all just Hour of Devastation? You have Force of Will from Amaket, and then you have Hour of Devastation after Hour of Devastation after Hour of Devastation, but mainly because it's new. After 90 days, we will see what the actual prices are. Amaket itself, I'll be frank with you, it something is wrong with the set. I cannot pinpoint what it is, but I've opened enough sets, I've played enough Magic to realize when a set will be valuable and good, and when a set will just be crap. I cannot explain to you, I think the power level is off. And I know a lot of you believe that Amaket is a very strong set and will have legacy playables everywhere and it's going to dominate vintage. <laughs> Come on, guys. That didn't happen. That, that, that did not happen even a little bit. And this new set, in my opinion, Hour of Devastation is even weaker than Amaket, which I wasn't a big fan of in terms of power level. Now, standalone, yes. Beautiful set. Very beautiful location. Everything is great. Nico Bullis in every artwork. Awesome. But as you know, in a wider pool, when you have Eternal Masters, you have Modern Masters. I mean, these are products that are directly competing for your wallet, right? At the same time, you have Iconic Masters coming soon, Commander 2017 with the cats and the dragons. I just don't see the power level. All right, now we get Cryptic Command, which is from the previous set of Almaquette. But as you have noticed, most of the were dropping from 180, 190, let's say call it 200 to 60 as the next most valuable one. And then we got days at 62. So quite interesting. So let me go back to that little rant about power level. I know a lot of you are confused as what I mean by power level. I mean that the cards will have playability after they rotate. Some cards are strong enough that I look at, like Thought Seeds, which was reprint, so it's pretty obvious. And I say, huh, Thought Seeds was 80 bucks. It was reprinted. Yes, this will have playability after rotation, because I already knew that. Knew that. But even newer cards like um, Coco, right? It's not going to be a tier one deck, but you look at Coco and you say, hmm, it's a good card. It's a very, very good card. Or even newer than that, Fatal Push. If it already sees play in the modern and the legacy formats, then it probably is safe to say even after rotation, it will continue to see play. And that is what I'm basing my assessment on the set of. How many cards in Amaket are seeing play in modern? How many are seeing play in legacy? And to a lesser extent, how many are seeing play in EDH? EDH, you always have a little bit more time to pick up on stuff than uh, the other eternal formats because the other eternal formats you need four ofs so they tend to go faster but um i don't know i think it's a beautifully designed set whoever designed it you know i applaud them and i think it's a great standalone set and if i didn't know anything about magic i was a brand new magic player i would think this was fantastic this was a home run but having survived multiple rotations i understand that the card value is I, I don't see any of these surviving rotation. Even outside Nicol Bolas, I just don't see any of the regular Amaket cards or the 
our Devastation cards doing super well. Um, maybe in EDH, yeah, they will find a home in EDH. A lot of them seem very good in EDH. Um, maybe one of two of them will be a modern add-on for a combo deck of some type. But the large majority of them, I look at them and I say to myself, hmm, will it survive rotation? Um, is it going to see modern play? Is it going to see EDH play? Is it going to see legacy play? Uh, power level determines that, right? Snapcaster is very powerful. Lily is very powerful. You don't need to be a genius to figure out, ha, huh, Snapcaster will probably see a lot of legacy play and a lot of uh, modern play. Oh, I mean, depends on the meta, right? Anyway, that's it, guys. Leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.